Hi guys. It is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous over-the-top and beautiful day down here in paradise somewhere in the uh, in an undisclosed swamp out here in the sunshine state of, uh, of Florida and I'm uh, down here being a snowbird <clears throat> from New York enjoying Florida while I still can and I mean there is nowhere on this planet I don't think then there's that's more beautiful than Florida today but we're going uh, here what is today it is Thursday February 25th 2021 a gorgeous spring day in February it will be they're saying 89 degrees uh, in two days uh, <laughs> here in February. <clears throat> but we're going to jump ahead a little bit and look at Florida and New York and everywhere in between. I want to thank Alert Tribes member for sending me this <clears throat> long article from uh, this outfit called ProPublica. I'm talking about this new study <coughs> from this group called the Rhodium Group. I, uh, I've heard of this outfit, the Rhodium Group, and I need to, uh, I need to uh, find out a little bit more about who they are. But this is their prediction about where the U.S. at least is going over the next few decades as we see new climate maps show a transformed United States. All right. According to new data, this was actually came out in September, but I'm sure anything in this article is still valid. According to new data from the Rhodium Group, analyzed by ProPublica and the New York Times Magazine, warming temperatures and changing rainfall will drive agriculture and temperate climates northward, while sea level rise will consume coastlines and dangerous levels of humidity will swamp the Mississippi River Valley, taken with other <coughs> taken with other research showing that the most habitable climate in North America <clears throat> will shift northward and the incidence of large fires will increase across the country. This suggests that the climate crisis will profoundly interrupt the way we live and farm in the United States. Uh, see how the North American places where humans have lived for thousands of years will shift and what changes are in store for your own county. So this article actually analyzes every single county in the United States, weighting them about how doomed they are. Uh, anyone uh, trying to figure out where they or I should say their children and grandchildren should be moving. Let's see what the Rhodium Group is recommending to whoever inherits what this country will look like 30 or 40 years. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in a paper published in the, Proceeding of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, a team of researchers modeled the human climate niche, the regions where temperature and precipitation have been most suitable for humans to live in over the past 6,000 years. And generally, green, green is good. Green is good. Okay, so uh, let's zero in on our own country. Where we are now, this is where the niche the most Goldilocks belt in the U.S. is at the moment. In the United States, that niche today blankets the heart of the country from the Atlantic seaboard through northern Texas and Nebraska and the California coast right now. Of course, the California coast 
always been one of my favorite places. But this is the situation today that let's move the clock forward. Uh, now, as we move the clock forward, uh, so this is looking at 2070 as uh, the Goldilocks belt moves northward. But as the climate warms, the niche could shift drastically northward under even a modern carbon emission scenario. By 2070, much of the southeast becomes less suitable and the niche shifts toward the Midwest. Well, towards the Midwest and uh, upstate New York and New England. So you can see it. So let's go forward again. So this is what the map is going to look like in the case of extreme warning. The niche move. This is a you know looking at the different models. So the worst case scenario model, and and of course history is showing over and over again that the worst case models. Uh, over and over again are proving not to be worst case, but according to the present worst case model uh, that they looked at, in the case of extreme warming, the niche moves sharply toward Canada, leaving much of the lower half of the U.S. too hot or dry for the type of climate humans historically have lived in <clears throat> both scenarios, you know, the mid-range and the worst case, both scenarios suggest massive upheavals in where Americans currently live and grow food, uh, moving north, north, north. And um, Okay, now we're going to switch from that map to the heat index, uh, what it's going to look like between, uh, this is between 2040 and 2060, this one here. Heat is one of the largest drivers changing the niche of human habitability. Rhodium group researchers estimate that under the worst case scenario, between 2040 and 2060, let's call it 2050, extreme temperatures will become commonplace in the south and the southwest, with some counties in Arizona experiencing temperatures above 90 to 95 degrees for half the year. Uh, unfortunately, this box is over the... Okay, there's Arizona and... Uh, there's good old Texas. This is Austin, Texas. You know, I am a climate change refugee from Austin, Texas. This is where I am in Florida right now. And here's New York, looking pretty good in the year 2050. Uh, upstate New York, all of New England, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Still looking pretty good. Uh, okay, there's the. There you go. I mean, you can tell at a glance. Uh, so this is where it's going to be 88 degrees in February in a couple of days. Uh, this is looking at Phoenix, Arizona's Maricopa County, could see almost six months each year above. 95 degrees. Uh, heat alone, however, will not determine Americans' fate. A new climate analysis presented for the first time here projects how humidity and heat will collide to form, quote, wet bulb temperatures that will disrupt the norms of daily existence. Today, the combination of truly dangerous heat and humidity is rare, but by 2050, parts of 
the Midwest and Louisiana could see conditions that make it difficult for the human body to cool itself for nearly one out of every 20 days in the year. New projections for farm productivity also suggest that growing food will become difficult across large parts of the country, including the heart of the High Plains $35 billion agriculture industry, all the while sea levels <coughs> will transform the coast. Combined, these factors will then lead to profound economic losses and possibly mass migration of Americans away from distress in much of the southern and coastal regions of the country. Meanwhile, the northern Midwest and Great Plains will benefit in farm productivity, in economy, and in overall comfort. And I don't know why they keep leaving out New York and New England with this. So uh, you can actually put your county in and, um, and, and see how your county uh, <clears throat> rates. Uh, when heat meets excessive humidity, the body can no longer cool itself by sweating. Blah, blah, blah. Um, where, I, when you make this combination, uh, 82 degrees can feel like southern Alabama today on its hottest day, making it dangerous to work outdoors and for children to play school sports as wet bulb temperatures increase even higher so will the risk of heat stroke and even death. So, uh, you know, some of the epicenters are for wet bulb temperatures, Arizona, Louisiana, and right in the lower Midwest, uh, Tioga County looking pretty good. Uh, so if you want to get out of the wet bulb temperature. All right. <clears throat> By mid-century, heat and humidity in Missouri, that's uh, in Missouri, will feel like Louisiana does today, while some areas we don't usually think of as human, like southwestern Arizona will see soaring wet bulb temperatures um, for all of these complicated regions. Okay, they go from wet bulb temperature predictions to wa large wildfires. <clears throat> uh, they're looking at 2040 to 2071 with heat and ever more prevalent drought, the likelihood that very large wildfires defined as ones that burn over 12,000 acres will affect U.S. regions in increases substantially, <clears throat> particularly in the West, Northwest, and the Rocky Mountains, but also in Florida, Georgia, and the Southeast, according to peer-reviewed research published in the International Journal of Wildlife Fire. Uh, so obviously the uh, uh, the Western U.S. Uh, I, I mean, clearly, what's interesting is the the epicenter of this is actually east of the Sierras in the uh, in the Great Basin uh, of Nevada and Southeast Oregon, where there's not even much timber. But these projections are talking about how grasslands and high desert. That uh, I'm glad to see Tioga County, New York, uh, New York, and New England, virtually zero uh, increase in wildfire danger between now and 2070. So we got more reasons, and, and this is the reason. It's the, 
You, you know, I, I mentioned before <coughs> that Sancho Panza and I, we were, our plan was to move from Austin, Texas to the Pacific Northwest <coughs> when uh, I turned 60 years old. <clears throat> you know, in the year 2020, that was our plan to bail out of Texas and head to the Pacific Northwest. So I spent three summers out there, Sancho and I did. Every year we got blown, every summer we got blown out of the Pacific Northwest by the wildfire smoke. And uh, so it was actually the wildfire smoke that blew Sancho and I uh, out of the Pacific Northwest to uh, Tioga County, New York. All right. <clears throat> See, this is where they're talking about that it's actually the Great Basin that uh, will take the biggest hit. Okay, this is their sea level rise doomsday report from 2040 to 2060. As sea levels rise, the share of property submerged by high tides increases dramatically, affecting a small sliver of the nation's land, but a disproportionate share of its population. Well, obviously, uh, where, where do you think uh, sea level rise, at least Tioga County, New York. So, uh, you know, southern Louisiana, uh, one of the major places that are going to start going underwater. Of course, South Florida, you can see what Florida is eventually going to look like. And then, uh, uh, here is, you know, North Carolina. Here is Washington, D.C. and New York City. Uh, New York City pretty much completely, uh, you know, sea level rise. This is 2040 to 2060. Uh, anyway, some 50 million Americans live in eight of the largest U.S. metro areas, <clears throat> Miami, New York, and Boston among them, which all lie in some of the most affected counties in the U.S. Okay, then they look at farm crop yields from 2040 to 2060. With rising temperatures, it will become more difficult to grow food. Corn and soy are now the most prevalent crops in the U.S. and the basis for livestock feed and other staple foods. And they have critical economic significance because of their broad regional spread. They offer the best proxy for predicting how farming will be affected by rising temperatures and changing water supplies. So basically, <clears throat> in this map, green is good, <clears throat> green is good, purple is bad, purple is bad. Uh, I mean, look at the state of Texas. Uh, good Lord, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, uh, Georgia, the Carolinas, uh, but the it actually improves uh, at, at, you know, the green, the darker green is you will be able actually to grow more food uh, in the green areas. Uh, I'm surprised that New England got left out of that. Uh, but it looks like uh, North Dakota uh, will see the biggest improvement in crop yields. Uh, corn and soy production is more sensitive to heat than drought 
and it will decrease for every degree of warming by mid-century North Dakota, which already harvests millions of acres of both crops, will warm enough to allow for more growing days and higher yields that parts of Texas and Oklahoma may see yields drop by more than 70%. And then they look at the economic damage. Uh, rising energy costs, lower labor productivity, poor crop yields, and increasing crime um, are among the climate-driven elements that will increasingly drag on the U.S. economy, eventually taking a financial toll uh, that exceeds that from the corona panic uh, in some regions. Uh, come on, you computer, you NAM computer, this is a 1600 computer. Uh, so what this is looking at is climate damage, climate damage uh, as a percent of GDP and again in this case green is good and like orange and brown are bad uh, so look at Florida uh, Florida according to this is going to take a huge economic hit uh, from climate change over the next 30 years uh, but I'd like to see good old, good old Tioga County, New York, and New England. Look at the state of Maine. The state of Maine is actually going to be in better shape uh, than it is today, except for right on the coast. Okay, so what is the greatest climate risk? How about compounding calamities? Taken together, some parts of the U.S. will see a number of issues stack on top of one another. Heat and humidity make it harder to work outside while the ocean continues to claim more coastal land. Okay, so the table below ranks the most at-risk counties in the U.S. if all of the perils were combined. Uh, you can also sort by individual climate risk to see how each one stacks up with higher numbers being worse in all categories. Uh, all right, so these projections are for the years 2040 to 2060 under the worst case scenario. So what is the number one most screwed county in the United States of America. How about Beaufort County, South Carolina coming uh, in as number one as the most screwed county in America. Let's look at the top five. Number two most screwed, Pinal County, Arizona. Number three most screwed, St. Martin Parish, Louisiana, number four most screwed, Colleton County, South Carolina, and the fifth most screwed county, we'll call it the year 2050, would be Wakulla County, Florida. But of course, let's look at the, uh, so they rate every single county in the United States I am glad to see Tioga County. Uh, I don't know what number, but towards the top. Good Lord, every single county. And so now we're getting, uh, you know, we're getting into uh, upstate New York, uh, New England, and the upper, upper Midwest. Uh, there are a lot of counties in the U.S., is there any bottom to this? Drum roll, please. Good Lord. I guess I did not know how many counties there were, uh, but we're going to do... <clears throat> okay. 
Let's build up. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth uh, best county to move in is Piakatakis County, Maine. And the four best counties in the United States are all in the tiny little state of Vermont, which is about the size of a county in a lot of states. So number four, best county, Essex County, Vermont. Number three, Franklin County, Vermont. Number two, Orange County, Vermont. And the number one best county to be living in in the year 2050 would be Lamal County, Vermont, but pretty much just the state of Vermont. Uh, the state of Vermont uh, is where you want to be, and uh, Maine is looking very good. I would say Maine is coming in the number two uh, best place. Uh, where is New York? New York tends to uh, New York uh, tends to clump uh, in the middle, but but you, you you know still in good shape. Where the hell is New York? Uh, anyway, guys, you can play around with this. You can stick. Here's New York. Uh, New York is uh, rating pretty good when you add up all of these numbers. But uh, anyway, I am not in New York for the simple reason there's about three feet of snow. What is the temperature in Tioga County, New York right now? Uh, it is 36 degrees in Tioga County, New York. Uh, with a low of 21 tonight, which is why I am not in Tioga County, New York. What is my own? Uh, 36 in Tioga County. It is 81 degrees and sunny right here in uh, the uh, point in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Look at that. Uh, Look at that weather forecast, and you ask why I don't live in Tioga County, New York in the winter time. There's ten reasons, but uh, 88 degrees this weekend. But I got to get out there and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous 81 degree sunny day in February while I still can. Bye, guys.